worst Ooh. take. Let's oh, get to worst go. take, man. And for worst take, we want you guys to send us as we ramp up for each Knicks Weekly. If there's a bad take out there, whether it's, you know, somebody from the major network said something ridiculous or, or your homies in the group chat are wiling out over a Knicks take, send it to us on social media. Or email us, kftvmedia at gmail.com, and we will react to the best ones on the edition of Worst Take. All right, Al. So the first one up is our guy, Stephen A. Smith. And Mm. he was on First Take earlier this week, and he was asked about Jalen Brunson versus Shea Gilgis Alexander. Let's hear what Stephen A. had to say. On, uh, on such things. Here we go. It's been sensational. Jalen Brunson has been sensational. As a native New York and a diehard Knicks fan, I'm so thankful and grateful for the greatness that he's put on display. I think he's been arguably the greatest free agent pickup this decade outside of LeBron James. I mean, he's been that phenomenal. Averaging 29 a game, by the way, since Julius Randle and OG and Anobi has gone down. And having said that, he's still behind Shea Gilgis Alexander. Let's pump the brakes just a touch and put into perspective who Shea Gilgis Alexander is and what this brother brings to the table. He's second in the league in scoring. He's averaging 30.9 points per game. Career high, 54.4% shooting from the field. 37.5% from three-point range. Leads the NBA in over two steals per game. Career high, 6.4 assists per game. Right there with Brunson at 6'5". 14.7 14.7 points in the paint per game, which is fifth in the NBA. And check out this stat, Perk. On pace to join Michael Jordan as the only players in league history with two seasons averaging 30 points and five assists, shooting 50% from the field by the age of 25. This brother is something special. All right, Al. Is that a good take or the worst take? I think it's a worst take. Mm, talk about it. How many times do we have to watch Jalen Brunson not have his guy, his his running mate out there, Julius Randle, and, and still go out there and win and still maintain fourth in the Eastern Conference? I'm looking at OKC, and this is not to discredit what SGA has done for that team. SGA has been averaging 30. He did it last season, too. SGA is a talent. But are we also going to ignore the addition of Chet Holmgren to this rotation? Are we also going to ignore that Jalen Williams has stepped up to being that secondary score for this team? Are we also going to ignore Isaiah Joe, the other Jalen Williams coming off the bench? Are we going to ignore Lou Dort and what he does for this team? It just seems like when we talk about SGA and as great as he is, he is that dude. He is the guy that makes that team run. Without him, they're not in the position that they are, no doubt about it. But they also need the rest of those guys on that team to stay in contention okay even giddy gives you some games here and there yeah so they have a stacked roster the knicks are deep team but i wouldn't put them without julius randall a fully stacked roster whereas like i'm looking when i look at that thunder team i could say you know what jail williams he could probably go be his own guy on his own team check can go be his own guy on his own team sga is the guy on his team how many guys outside of Brunson right now can you say this guy could be the guy on his own team without Julius? Because Julius showed us the first year he won most improved, was an all-star, all NBA. He could be a guy to lead the team and, and, and take you, you know, to get that good positioning for the playoffs. Brunson's shown that. But you don't have your guy. Who else? Is it Dante? I don't see Dante being a guy that can run his own team. I don't see Josh Hart being a guy that can run his own team. These guys are great role players. But you need Jalen Brunson to be that engine that keeps this car moving. So I give Brunson that edge because he's had to do more with less than SGA on this season. But what do you think? I got to go the other way, man. Oh. I got to go the other way. As much as I would like to say this is a worst take candidate, I think it's actually a good take. I think it is a good take by Stephen A. Um, I mean, if you look at the two players side by side comparison, SGA SGA uh, is going to take Brunson, man. Both guys have played relatively the same amount of games. You had SGA at 68, Brunson at 65. Uh, SGA 30 points per game, Brunson 27. 
SGA five rebounds, bigger guard, Brunson three. Uh, relatively same in assists per game. Now, what I would say SGA, where he's a little bit different than Brunson, he's not the three-point shooter that Brunson is, right? He's not a three-point shooter. Shooting 37% from three, Brunson shooting 30, but SGA gets his buckets a little bit differently because he is a mid-range assassin in his own right. How about this? They've played roughly the same amount of games. Jalen Brunson now, 30-plus point games this season, 27. How much do you think Shea has? That, I mean, he's averaging 30, CP. <laughs> how many How many 30-plus point games? 50. 50. 50. Uh, that's not all. If you go to the advanced numbers, he's clearing them. From VORP to box plus minus, you're talking about play efficiency rating. I mean, SGA, he's, he's clearing Brunson in, in a lot of these stats especially in the advanced stats. Um, True shooting percentage, 64% to 58%. Uh, Like I said, the player efficiency rating, 30 for SGA, 22 for Brunson. Win shares, 14 for SGA, 8.7 for Brunson. I mentioned the VORP, 6.8 to 4.3. I mean, these are MVP-type numbers, like legit MVP-type numbers. Not like, you know, you deserve to be in the conversation. Like, these are legit Legit MVP type numbers here um, from SGA as compared to Brunson. I think they are comparable players. Like in a crunch time scenario, who am I looking for? I think it's a toss up. You know, I love Brunson in crunch time. SGA statistically has shown that uh, he's one of the best clutch players in the sport. But I, I think you could literally toss it up. I, but I think SGA clears him. He's a better defender, I think he's a better playmaker. And the advanced numbers show that in terms of impact, who's more impactful for their team. I'm, I'm going to give it to SGA, and I think that's why he's a legitimate uh, MVP candidate. Whereas Brunson is in the conversation, but SGA can legitimately win it. And then on top of that, I mean, you take your team from 10th in the West to the best in the West. Yes, there's a lot of, a lot of guys deserve that credit. Like you said, Jet for sure. Chet, for sure, especially defensively and as a rebounder, he's helped them. Jalen Williams, star, you know, in the making. I still think that it, SGA, it's, he's, the, he's the straw for that entire thing, man. He's a straw for I that entire you. thing. I, I, I got to give it to SGA, man. This is, you know, it's, uh, it's, not like we're at, it's not like we're arguing SGA or Trey or SGA or, or, or somebody else, you know? Yeah. It's not like we're it, – it, I think both these guys – are more than qualified for the award. I hear what you're saying. I would just say this to you, CP. I've seen SGA average 30 last year and be a play-in team. Yep. I've seen where Brunson has had, doesn't, even though he doesn't have to do that, just the gravity it's his just by himself changes the dynamics of what this team is. And for a guy like Jalen Brunson to not be stopped by any, play, any team last year, okay? He went through the Cavs. Miami didn't have an answer for him. We just heard uh, Mike Brown talk about how he got the Steph Curry treatment this year and, you know, blitzing him and making sure you make him uncomfortable. But that didn't stop him against the Sacramento Kings. This is a guy that doesn't get waiver, that still gets to his spots wherever he wants to. No one can stop his game. And I think when you think about that type of aspect to a player, yeah, you can go to the numbers, what you give to SGA. But for Jalen Brunson, he's doing stuff that just by the eye test alone says, this guy's a dog. This guy you got to respect. This guy is just unstoppable. And yes, SGA is also unstoppable. But when I look at the impact that he's made on a team, not only for his own team here on the New York Knicks for two seasons in a row, think about what happened when he when Luka was out in that first round of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. It was him that took down helped that take down the, to take down the Utah Jazz. Sure. And that's got to be accounted for as well because this is SGA's first time, first time being a guy that is leading his team to the playoffs, not play in playoffs and we still have to see what he do, does in the playoffs. I get the MVP is a regular season award. I guess that I get that is the measurement. I'm not saying SGA is buns. I'm not saying SGA is that he's more than like more than worthy to be in this conversation, but I'm going to go with my guy, Jalen Brunson, because to do it again, where you're now still, you were fifth last year. Now you're fourth this year. You're maintaining. And this is a guy that just takes it to another level in the playoffs. I'm going to go with my guy. Shout out our guy, Anthony Parasol, in the chat. He says, let's take a look at the clutch numbers. So in the clutch right now, 
you look at season totals and clutch being defined as, you know, game being within five points or less within the final five minutes of a game. Uh, SGA ninth in clutch points with 98. Boy, Steph Curry, 176 clutch points this year. Crazy. Wow. DeMar DeRozan, 166. Wait, Steph, how many clutch points is Steph Curry this 176, year? 176, bro. And how are they still in the play <laughs> Right, right, right. So, in total clutch points, uh, SGA in ninth overall with 98. And I think Brunson is about 24th with 72 clutch points. Brunson was like a top five clutch player last year. If you go to um, averages, these are totals per game in the clutch. You have uh, SGA is 16th with 3.2 points per game in the clutch. And then Brunson is, where's Brunson at? 20th. So SGA is 16th, Brunson is 20th with, uh, looks like 2 point, no, Brunson is 2.8 points per game. Or 3.0 points per game in the clutch. SGA 3.2. SGA shooting 61% from the field in the clutch. Brunson 46. SGA 36% from three in the clutch. Brunson 26 this year. Let's take a look at where it was last year just for uh, Ish and Giggles. So I know Brunson was way up there. If you go to points per game last year in the clutch, Brunson was at, he was eighth in the league with four points per game in the clutch. SGA was 19th with 3.4. Brunson was shooting last year 50%, 51% from the clutch, 37 from three. SGA 38%, 25 from three. Hmm. So almost reverse numbers between this year and last year between the two guys in, in the clutch. Interesting. Very interesting indeed, man. But what do you guys think of the chat, man? Brunson or SGA? What do you what did you make of uh, Stephen A's take? Was it a good take? Was it a worse take? Leave us a comment in the comment section, and we will respond to it uh, as we go along, man. <laughs>